What's up, guys? We're live. I gotta fix my camera real quick here. Give a second for people to come on. There we go, perfect. All right. live okay figured I would come down here and chat with you while I pour my beer real quick <laughs> all right we're getting some folks on now I think so um, we're live what's up Liam hey dude just a uh, just a random video here <laughs> grow big what's up dude yeah just a random video here, guys I uh, I was actually working on a video, a YouTube video, earlier today, uh, which I just finished up, and I'm going to be posting that tomorrow, but no, I just wanted to kind of come out here, and I'm grilling some food for me and my wife, and uh, just talk, just chat about some music, what's going on, while I grill and drink some brewskis here. Liam, it is, um, dude, I don't even know, I think it's like 6 p.m., it's like I think it's 6 or 6.30 p.m. I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And I'm I'm Eastern Standard Time here. So, um, you guys are wondering what I'm drinking here. It's Sunshine City IPA. This is from a local brewery. Actually, they're in St. Pete. So, Cheers. Man, that's good. So no, I just um, just coming on here to chat, guys. I've got the grill fired up here. I won't be playing any music on this video, so you know if you're looking for that, and you're like, oh, Jason, I'm not watching the video because you're not playing any tunes, man. Sorry about that, but this is just kind of hanging out, man. I've got the grill fired up. These you guys can see that. I'm not gonna get the phone too close to the grill. I've made that mistake before. Not good. Yeah, some Nathan's hot dogs are supposed to be like real quality hot dogs. I know hot dogs are bad for you. You guys know I work out and stuff. You're like, Jason, dude, why are you eating hot dogs? <laughs> Raymond, what's up, dude? T-bone. Yeah, I wish I had a T-bone, dude. Um, just keeping it real simple tonight, man. Yeah, protein. Hey, well, that's why I'm putting the chili. I mean, hot dogs don't have a lot of protein in them. They're kind of like probably one of the crappiest foods you can get. <laughs> yeah, dude, Liam is cooking with Jason. That's right. <laughs> But yeah, hot dogs are not are not a good quality food, but I've got a can of Hormel chili, like that's even better, <laughs> that I'm going to mix with them. So, yeah. But yeah, guys, got the grill going here, man. We've got to replace this thing soon. I've had this whole thing for a while. And there's the hot dogs we're throwing on soon. But yeah, I've had this grill for a long time since we moved into this house, which was like in 2000. In 2013, we moved into this house in June 2013. So, you guys know I suck at math. So, however many years that is, was that seven years? Yeah. The funny thing is, like that was a great year. 2013 was um, was a year we bought our house together, my wife and I, and uh, we had lived in an apartment for four years together before that. And that year was so awesome. I was I was working in my corporate job. Um, we moved in the house in June. Then around November, December, I was getting ready to release my first album of Apocalyptic Dreams, which I released that in December 2013. It was like right after that, I was on vacation. I got a call from HR at my job that I had then. And, you know, my boss was had been working on this promotion for me and that went through. So it was like, wow, 2013 was just so monumental, <laughs> you know, but 2020 is good. I think every year is good. I think every year you have to look for those things that even this year, I know a lot of we've been, we've all been through a lot of crap this year with all that's going on with the, the thing that I can't mention on YouTube because I've heard channels getting deemed for that, but that, and then all the, just all the social unrest and a lot of things, but I'm not getting into all that, but you know, you can look at things like that and you can say like, man, what a, what a shitty year this is, you know, or you can look at it, and this is how 
this is how a lot I, I read about a lot of successful people I'm constantly reading books and just learning and one of the things that I've learned that successful people do whether they own a business or entrepreneur or work working for someone or whatever, one of the things that they do is everything that happens, they always see it as an opportunity, even if it's bad. Like this whole thing, everything that's happened this year, you know, a lot of people, so our small percentage, a lot of people are like, oh, this is horrible, this year sucks, yeah. And I, and I agree, it does suck, but there's a small percentage of people that are looking at all these things that are going on. It's like, okay, what opportunities can I create from this? You know, so I'm trying to think that way and I want you guys to try to think that way as well. It's like, okay, yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff going on, but what are some opportunities that can come from this? You know, what are some problems that are out there that I know are out there and how can I provide a solution to that? So if you think like that and you know, and that solution, it might not be creating some, you know, Facebook <laughs> enterprise or something, you know, it may not be anything like monumental. It may be something just the fact that you say, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna make a point to reach out to someone today and be kind to them. You know, I'm gonna make a point to, if I see somebody struggling with something, if it's a lady, you know, with her three kids trying to carry her shopping cart back, I might just go push it back for her. You know, if it's somebody in the grocery store that needs help with their groceries and you see they're struggling or whatever, it could be anything, you know. I don't know that I recommend picking up strangers on the side of the road these days because, you know, that might not work out too good for you. <laughs> My dad, man, he used to pick up, he would pick up anybody on the street. I grew up in a small town, you know. Is that John Cougar Mellencamp? I was born in a small town, something like that. <laughs> but no, my dad, man, in fact, this is way back in the 80s, right? Things weren't quite as crazy now, but uh, he would just pick up anybody, man, you know. Yeah, I got grow big after 70s, after the 70s, picking up strangers is probably not the best thing. <laughs> yeah, dude. But anyway, so that's what I'm saying. They're like, if you know, you look at this bad year that we've had, and it's like, what are what are some things I can do to make it better? You may come up with something. You guys may have an idea that provides a solution to some of the things going on out there. You know, who knows? I mean, if you do, what I encourage you to do is, is start writing those things down and work on that. You know what I mean? So, whatever that may be, I don't know what it could be, but hey, you may have something. <laughs> So what are you guys up to this afternoon, man? It's a Saturday Saturday evening here in the U.S. I know you guys are from all over the place, all over the world. Once again, I always like to shout out to the local breweries. Um, I'm drinking, it's an IPA. It's called Sunshine City. And it's by a brewery called Green Bench Brewing. And they're in, uh, they're in St. Pete, Florida. Skate Beer Show, what's up, dude? I've seen some cool stuff from you lately, Skate Beer Show. It's awesome. DW, what's up? Yeah, you're in the southern United States. Raymond, yeah, local beer, dude. Local regular beer is good. Grow Big's already at the beach with the wife and kids. Already went to the beach. That's awesome, dude. Grow Big, where are you at, man? I, I, you guys always tell me where you're at, and I'm sorry I forget a lot of times. It's, you know... San, okay, San Diego. Man, California's beautiful, dude. I... My wife and I went to San Francisco, uh, I think it was either 2012 or 14. I think it was 2012. We stayed in San Francisco at Fisherman's Wharf. I know that's a long way away from San Diego, probably like a, another part of the world, you know. But anyway, it was just a real cool time. We rode bikes over the Golden Gate Bridge to Sausalito and spent some time in Napa Valley. It was real cool. Liam, you're in Argentina. That's awesome, dude. I'd love to go down there one day. Havana Lager, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's been rough, DW. I know it's been rough. And I, DW, I don't know if you caught me earlier, but I was just saying, you know, I'd, you know, I'd like us all to start thinking about how, what we can do to make it better, to make things better. And I know it's been, it's been a hell of a year, man. It really has. And it's not over yet. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I'm really trying to change my thinking into saying, instead of this sucks, saying, you know, what's the opportunity, you know, that I can make of this? You know, what can I do to make things better? And, um, you know, once you start doing that, I found that once you start focusing on other people sometimes and other things, and not that you shouldn't focus on yourself, I firmly believe that, but if you see someone in need or somebody that needs help and you just stop your day to just go help that person, 
I think that goes a long way. I think, you know, sometimes that takes the stress off of your own life. It's like, man, I just did this cool thing for this person. All right, let's look at the charcoal, guys. It's burning down. I've only got four hot dogs. I probably put too much charcoal on here. And again, I am not getting my phone close to that grill, man. I've made that mistake before. <laughs> That's not a good mistake to make. I posted a video the other day about making mistakes. And like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to make dumb mistakes. I'm sorry. It's okay to make mistakes, but don't make the dumb mistakes by putting your phone too close to the grill. <laughs> it didn't screw my old phone up, but it like it over... You could tell it was about to shut off. Like, I got a message on my iPhone. This is an old iPhone. I have the iPhone 11 now, but this is an iPhone 7 I had. It's about a year ago. And I can't remember if I was filming live or what, but I got a message on my phone saying it's too hot or something. I don't know. It was like, it was bad, though. It wasn't a good message. So we can throw these dogs on, guys. Now, I'm not a fan of hot dogs. Hot dogs are not good for you, obviously. But... We found these Nathan's hot dogs. These things here, guys. Dude, these things are awesome. They're Angus. <laughs> I used to make jokes all the time, like, hey, we're gonna eat some anus hot dogs. Leave out the G, you know, anus instead of Angus. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I don't think we want any anus dogs. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to find out where the opening is on these things, guys. I think my wife sealed these babies back up. All right, let me set this down for a minute. There we go. My wife got me this cool shirt, by the way. Meat, fire, beer, repeat. All right, let me try to open these up. Something. I don't know if these are sealed back up or what. Here we go. There's a little hole right there. My wife's funny. Like, she won't open the entire package. She'll just open a little bit, which makes sense. It keeps things fresher. So we're going to put these on the grill. These will probably cook pretty fast, too. So I don't know how long we'll stay on tonight. But at least we got to come on for a little bit here and just hang out. Sometimes it's cool just to hang out. All right, there's the dogs, guys. They're, they're cooking. Now, this grill, you can close it. And I'm not going to close it for too long, but that'll kind of like give it, that'll give it that smoky flavor. Guys, I don't know about you, but it is hot here, man. This is kind of gross, but I'm going to wipe my sweat off of my shirt here. I know that's very white trash of me to do that. <laughs> But I uh, know, man, it's uh, it's hot. I'm gonna be jumping in that later. That's where I'm going. It's funny when we bought this house. Uh, my, when my wife and I bought, we don't have a very big house, by the way. It's, I mean, it's less than 1,700 square feet. What's up, Ahmed? What's up, dude? But it's, um, we didn't want a pool when we bought it, and the prices were really good. And it was like, you know, it had a pool. And we, we sat out by it and we're like, man, I like this. We both liked it, so we got it. It's kind of a, sometimes it's a pain to have to clean it, but it's really not that bad. There's some really good beer, guys. But yeah, so just hanging out, grilling some dogs. I've got chili inside cooking. I wish I could say it was authentic homemade chili. Well, it's not. It's Hormel canned chili, <laughs> and I'm gonna throw it on some hot dogs, man. We're going, we're going old school tonight. Raymond, Miami, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's hot, dude. I mean, it's even even the water in the pool right now. It's like taking a bath. Like I'm gonna after I eat and drink a few beers, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna switch from IPAs to porter beers, and I'm gonna read. I usually sit and read in the pool. That's where. That's where my education happens sometimes. I'll sit in the pool and just read, you know. I'm reading this book right now, by the way, by Stephen Covey or Coney. And actually, this, this guy passed away in 2012. But the book is called The Seven or Seven Habits of Highly, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So I just started it. And, like, I'm not even in Chapter 1 yet. I've just been reading the preface and the forewords and all that because it's the 25th year anniversary of the book. 
seven habits of highly effective people. Um, that is, I, I'm blown away by the book right now and I barely started it. Yeah, DW, I'm, dude, I've got an umbrella. I'm cooking under this umbrella here. I'll show you guys this. This is what it look. This is what my grill area looks like here, man. That's when I'm grilling food. Now you guys see all this stuff right here. That's that's for our feral cats. We have a lot of feral cats that we feed. We used to have about seven feral cats that come around. Uh, now we've only got about three of them. And then the neighbor's cat comes over for the free buffet too. <laughs> His name's Romeo. He's a cool cat. I don't have any of them out here right now. I think Mama Cat is somewhere around here. She's the one that she's the one that we trapped and fixed first like about four years ago but that was uh that was something my wife started doing and i started helping her do that man she was just feeding cats out here though and we still lay food out here every morning and every night but yeah that's the grill area guys that's uh this i'll sit in that chair over there where my beer is and i'll just wait for stuff to grill and i'll just have a good old time man you know but yeah, as far as the sun, DW, as, as far as the sun, guys, I, I don't play with the sun, man. I think most of you guys know, most of you guys were, most of you guys saw the video where I had a scare with skin cancer. I had what was called pre-skin cancer. And it sounds worse than what it is. It really, you know, it was, it's really one of those things where it's like, okay, you've got some cells that are forming and we need to zap those. So the doctor zapped them, man. I had to wear this weird stuff on my head that like made me look like I had leprosy or something, man. I had to wear it like for two weeks, but the spots on my head went away. But now they're cooking now. You see them grill marks? Dude, I love to see grill marks on food. There's just something about a steak or a burger or a hot dog. When you see those grill marks on there, you know it's good. Much rather have that than cooking it. And we cook inside too, but anyway. But when I'm out in the pool, guys, I, I have like, I've got like, 10 different hats i probably don't have that many i'm exaggerating i probably have like i seriously have at least like five or six hats that i wear out there on a regular. and some of them are big hats they're like almost like sombreros <laughs> you know so anyway but yeah i always wear a hat when we go uh when we go to the pool and my wife and i also like to kayak and i'll wear a hat when i go kayaking too like right now i've got this i've got this umbrella the sun's not even out right now it's kind of overcast but it's um I, you can still get rays from that like even through the clouds you know you can still get sunburned so yeah i don't mess around with that i put i'll put sunblock on my arms and all that stuff and then wear a hat but yeah the other day i was out here and a fly landed in my beer <laughs> so at that point you got two choices do you pour your beer out or do you just get the fly out and continue drinking the beer you guys can obviously guess which one I did. I just got the fly out, man. I'm not letting that ruin my beer. <laughs> Plus the alcohol kills all the germs anyway. That's what we tell ourselves, you know. <laughs> uh, man. But yeah, dudes. So I hope you guys are doing all right, man. Uh, we didn't have chops and hops this past Thursday. So that means I, I do plan to have it this coming Thursday. Uh, this, you know, at 6, the same time, 6.30 p.m. I've got a video coming out for you guys tomorrow. I got something I want to share with you real quick too. This, and I meant to share this earlier, but anyway, so I just finished recording a YouTube video, um, and then that's going to be released tomorrow. All right. So that's, and I'll tell you what it's about. I'm, I, uh, I'm playing live through my EVH amp. You guys know I have the EVH 5153 amp and it's got the EL 34s and I've been really spending more time miking that amp, just getting tones, and that's a lot of what I'm doing is testing tones for my album I'm recording right now and letting you guys hear it. So a lot of your feedback that you give me will determine what direction I go with the album and with tones. So tomorrow, I'll release it. I'll release a video in the morning. I didn't want to release it tonight because it's already kind of late, and sometimes when you put a video out there late, the YouTube algorithm kind of, you know, I don't know, so it, just weird things happen. It just seems like it's better for me to post the videos like during the daytime, but I'll post this in the morning and uh, I forget the title of it. I think it's called 80s Heavy Metal Tones because it's kind of an 80s metal tone that I'm giving you guys on this video with the blue channel in the EVH amp. The blue channel 
And just so you guys, those of you who aren't familiar with this particular amp, it's got three channels. There's a green channel, which is clean. Oh, I'm letting these stay in here too long, man. Yep, they're grilling. Look at those dogs. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be hot dogs as nasty as they are. They're so good on the grill. But anyway, so the, the EVH has three channels, a green channel, which is a clean, go green, go clean. Um, the blue channel, which is more like a Marshall tone almost. I don't want to say the EVH sounds like a Marshall because that's not really accurate, but it's more, it's, it's more of that diversified channel where you can play just about anything with it, you know, from country even to whatever to even hard rock or metal. And then, of course, it's got the red channel, which that's the full-on high game metal channel. So most metal guitarists are going to use the red channel, obviously. I wanted to use the blue channel, though, that middle of the road channel, to see what it would sound like. Uh, so I did, and that's what you will hear tomorrow, and I think you guys will be surprised. I'm actually playing along with a song off Apocalyptic Dreams, my very first album, you know. Uh, I saw the boiling, but I didn't see the whole comment, dude. I'm sorry. I didn't catch all that. Wait a minute. I've got a little button up here. Hold on. Uh, all messages are visible. Okay. Okay. I was trying to see if I could see the messages as we were talking here. I can see them pop up, but they don't stay up very long. Um, but anyway, somebody asked me just now, what was the first guitar solo I learned? The first, well, so the first song I learned was Iron Man. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 you know, and that was the first song I learned on an acoustic guitar. Just I just played it on one string because that was real easy to learn. And there was a couple of different ways you can play it, so I learned the different ways. And um, the first guitar solo I learned. Oh, dude, that's a funny question, man. Because I think, like right out of the gate, I started trying to play lead guitar. That was what I wanted to do, you know. It's funny because before that, I was going back and forth when I did when I'd never seen a guitar, when I never or like touched a guitar, played a guitar. I was like, should I play bass or should I play guitar? And I don't think you can go wrong either way, to be honest with you, because I mean, there's a great need for awesome bass players. There's a lot of mediocre bass players out there, and a lot of people think that bass is is easy, but really it's not. There's an art to playing bass. And one of the keys to playing bass is not playing the exact same thing the guitar is playing all the time, like most bass players do. So anyway, I chose guitar instead, which I'm happy. I'm glad I did that because it's just, it's, you know, you know what fits you. But I immediately started trying to learn Metallica songs and Guns N' Roses. But I would say the first, like, real solo that I ever sat down and, and learned and spent a lot of time on was probably Sweet Child of Mine. I think that was my first, like, I know I learned some other things before that, but I think that was my first solo that I actually, like, I really sat down, like, I'm going to learn this solo. And I'll be honest with you guys, um, I haven't I haven't learned a lot of music. So, Liam, you want to play lead guitar and bass. That's a good thing, dude. If you learn how to play bass real good, when you start recording your own music, you can lay your own bass tracks. And it will do two things for you. For one, it'll save you money from having to hire a real bass player, which is never a bad thing. Never a bad thing to hire somebody for for help with your music. I know it's an expense, but it's one of those things that if you want to release something professionally, and this is things I've learned, and you guys are learning from a lot of my videos, you will learn from my mistakes. <laughs> I'll share my mistakes so that you don't make the same mistakes I did. And you can just kind of skip that part, you know, because of the things I'll share with you. Um, but like if you if you learn how to play bass really well, you know, get really accomplished at it, um, you won't have to hire a bass player. And most people that won't hire a bass player will have just a buddy do it or they will attempt to do it on their own and it just doesn't end up sounding good. But if you learn how to do it really well, you'll you'll skip that headache too. So yeah, learning to play bass, but learning to get real good at bass is, is a thing. I don't practice bass enough. And I, I do plan to lay the bass tracks on my upcoming album. Which the name of this album, I can share it with you guys now. I'll share it again on Chops and Hops this week because I know some people aren't on. But the name of this album is kind of a made up name. It's called Overcometh. Like, you know, you overcome, but cometh sounds better <laughs> than just overcome, you know. So Overcometh. It's got like a nice little metal ring to it, you know, kind of a dark, you know. So I'm getting ready to plan the photo shoot for the album and all that my wife's gonna help me with that because she's real good at that sort of thing um you know she'll let me know if something looks right or doesn't look right or whatever 
So, yes, Overcometh, dude. Overcometh is the name of the album. I was going to call it something else. Um, I was going to call it Manufactured Chaos. And the reason I was going to call it Manufactured Chaos is because I, you know, all the stuff going on right now with the media, I feel like the media is just manufacturing chaos, wants to get people riled up. And, uh, but I'm like, no, I don't want to go that route with it because I don't, I don't really get into that stuff anyway. So, and then Overcometh came up. So the genre, so this is going to be a full-on metal album, uh, but it's, uh, you know, the thing is, it's an instrumental album. So this will not be a vocal album at all. I may have one song at the end that has vocals on it. And if I put, if I decide to go with that song to put it on the album, you guys are going to be like, this is different. You know, some of you may like it, some of you may not. But if I do go with that album, then, or I'm sorry, if I do go with that song, then, you know, you got, I'll, I'll let you hear some teaser clips of it later. But anyway, uh, it's going to have about 12, probably 12 tracks on it. And there's, it's going to be metal. It's going to be instrumental. There's going to be some shredding, of course, but the, I'm not going to be playing guitar solos every single second of the song. You guys are going to hear a lot of rhythm parts as well and a lot of breakdowns. And there's going to be a lot of ambient type stuff that happens in the album. There's even a couple of songs that I'm playing with my Ibanez that are a little bit lighter. They're not really metal. They're more of kind of like a mood rock style. So it's going to be a very interesting album, to say the least. It's, it's not going to be one of those albums where every song sounds the same. And I think that's the problem with albums nowadays. So what am, somebody asked, what am I listening to lately? Um, it's funny. I was on the way to uh, on the way home from the beer store earlier, and just I just plugged my phone into the car, and Amana Marth starts <laughs> playing. So I'm like, that's what I listen, that's the last thing I listen to. But honestly, um, I've been listening to a lot of my own music lately. I I have been dumping my own tracks down. I've got the rhythm guitar tracks recorded for everything. I've got my dummy drum track recorded, the bass tracks, some of the leads, you know, um, you know, just the ideas. So I have honestly been listening just to my own music lately. And that along with my Apocalyptic Dreams album, because I, I really want to do a live show with that. I've just been so busy doing other things. Um, I could be practicing it right now, but I'm about to eat instead. <laughs> but I want to, I want to, I want to do like a live YouTube show and play through some of the songs from Apocalyptic Dreams. A lot of people have asked me for that, so I want to deliver that. But I had a, I had, I had lost the tracks, the original tracks of that song. And for me to play it live, since I don't have a full band, I wanted to play. I wanted to have the rhythm sections playing in the background, and me playing the lead guitar. So what I had to do is go in the studio and just mute the lead guitar. So hopefully that makes sense, you know, so that when I play the lead along with the backing tracks, it's, it's real. You know what I mean? It's, it's not me playing along with my music and not like I'm not going to be playing lead along with the lead. You're just going to hear my my live lead. So right now I'm just kind of relearning some of those songs because I've forgotten how to play a lot of them, man. That's the cool thing, though, about guitar solos. I'm going to close this up one more time, guys. The cool thing about... Um, the way I play anyway is uh, is I like to write melodies and melodies are sometimes I don't want to say they're easy to play they're some, in some cases they're easy some sometimes they're harder but uh, writing those types of melodies are memorable so I can usually remember those and then the other off the wall stuff I do it's like okay well that's just gonna sound different you know from from what the actual album sounds because I don't remember all that um, no, I, somebody mentioned Slaughter by Prevail or something like that. I haven't heard that, dude. I have not heard that at all. Nope. But anyway, so that's, I haven't really been listening to a lot of music lately, guys. Um, I'm trying to think. There's one band that I listen to quite a bit. When I'm working, when I'm blogging, uh, I listen to The Birthday Massacre. Modern Pilsner. Dusty Dude, I am drinking a local, a local IPA called Sunshine City IPA. It's from Green Bench Brewing. They're in, I live in the Tampa area in Sefner, and this is in St. Pete, though. It's about an hour away from us. So that's what I'm drinking right now. But yeah, so I've been listening, really, I've been listening to a lot of my own music. And when I'm blogging, because I, I do write a lot, usually I'll throw on some Birthday Massacre, the Birthday Massacre. And they're not really even metal. They're more of like a gothic rock type of band, a lot of synth. But there's something about their music. I just love it. No, I haven't listened to Trivium's new one, man. I haven't, I haven't, I hadn't had a chance to listen to any new stuff lately, man. 
like I said, and what and when I'm listening to something, it's usually in the background because I'm because I'm working. If I'm not in the studio recording, writing and recording music, which I'm doing a lot of right now because I'm writing for two projects, my solo album, and I'm also writing for uh, my friend and I's Flow Bros project. So I'm writing for that as well and recording for that as well. So I'm like writing and I'm doing two albums at one time right now. So uh, the time I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm usually blogging. You guys know I own, um, I own the muscleprogram.com, which is a fitness a blog, fitness blog. So I'm constantly writing for that site and doing updates. And that's when I have like background music going on. And I try to listen to new bands then, but a lot of times I'll just throw on something that's kind of familiar and I'm like, I'm listening, but I'm not really listening, you know, cause I'm working, you know, um, anyway, so, but yeah, the birthday massacre, I listened to a lot of that. And in the past several days, I've been listening to, uh, Joe Triani. death metal vocals, uh, dusty. I don't know if you saw my video. Um, if you look on my channel, dude, and I'm, I'm about to wrap up our live here cause I get, my dogs are done. My hot dogs, they are done. So. We're going to put these things on the plate. My wife's hungry and I'm hungry too. But um, I have a video out there, dude. Yeah, if you guys can if you guys can um, post my video in the chat. Like I said, I'm, I'm filming on my iPhone right now, so I can't do anything. But I've got, if you go through my videos, if you type in the YouTube search, type in my name, Jason Stallworth, and then, and then just type in death metal vocals. And you'll find, you'll find, I've got a couple of videos out there. I've got one for the vocal technique on how to, you know, I think five things for death metal, something like that. And I've got some recording tips as well. There's like two or three videos on death metal vocals. I need to put more out there, but definitely look at those, man, because I get, I don't know if they're the correct techniques that I'm giving, but they're the techniques that I've used that help me, you know, some other vocal experts may disagree you know with what i put out there but that's just the thing sometimes you have to find what works for you you know but uh check those out dusty i think those may help you man i hope so anyway well guys i gotta wrap this up man my hot dogs are ready there they are and i've got my chili on the stove so thank you guys thank you guys so much for hanging out with me tonight and uh i guess it's not night yet but I appreciate all of you guys. I really do. And I will see you um, I will see you this Thursday. Stay tuned tomorrow. The YouTube video will post tomorrow. I'll post that tomorrow. Uh, just, just watch for that. And then, of course, we'll have our chops and hops on, um, on Thursday, okay? Thank you, guys. Keep it metal and be safe out there.